we're going to do is star choke, and then we're just going to do it from different positions. Okay? So there's lots of different ways, lots of different positions you can get this. If you just once you once you see the basics of it and understand it, you'll see that it presents itself even from disadvantaged positions sometimes. So uh, let's just go from the beginning of it, I guess. Um, the easiest way I guess to learn it is from side control, I guess. Um, yeah, why not? All right, so just from a basic side control position, right? Um, one of the ways my partner's going to try and get out is potentially to get an underhook on me so he could like, just throw my arm and come out to my back, right? So basically what I want is I want to take advantage of his underhook once he gets it, right? So I'm here. The minute he gets that underhook, I need to throw my wizard on it and stuff his head, okay? And, and I use this hand too to also cup the neck. Can you guys, everybody see what I'm doing here? Let's move back a little bit. Okay, so we'll start from the beginning in here. So we're, we're in side control. He shoots for the underhook. The minute he does that, I need to do one, two. Okay, my first move is to throw my wizard on. You guys are all familiar with that, right? Okay, so I throw my wizard, I try and keep it pretty tight. And my, my top hand, I stuff his head. Okay, I'm not content with just coming here and keeping his hand free. I want to also stuff and make him as uncomfortable as he can possibly be. Okay, from this position, all I like to do is I don't release and then come back down. I like to push. You see how he just reacted to that? Okay? If I if I because if I release and come back, now I need to tighten it up. Okay? So one more time, let's go back a step. Okay, so he shoots for his underhook, I wizard, I stuff. Okay, once I stuff, he keeps reacting to that, okay? That means I'm doing something right, okay? From here, instead of releasing and going to my bicep, I slide down. So I want it to be tight and then tighter and tighter and tighter. I need to get this hand to my bicep, okay? If I'm low on this, it's, it's, it's weak. I want to go to my bicep because that does two things. A, it tightens it up, and B, it goes from the back of my wrist being on his neck to my rich hand, okay? So I want this part of my hand right across his neck. And if I, if I don't get up to my bicep, it's going to be the back of my hand and it's going to be a, a loose choke, right? So stuff, slide to the bicep. From here, bring this hand up. And basically all I do is I slide my lower leg back, okay? Uh, let's turn like, this way, and then we'll do it the opposite way here. Okay, so, you get the underhook, wizard, shuffle, come. Okay, press the head, slide down it, hand up to the shoulder blade. Bottom leg, sprawl, turn this way. Takes his underhook, wizard stuff. Slide. And bottom leg, just pull back. Any questions so far on that? His bottom arm? No. If I set it up properly, his bottom arm shouldn't be able to do anything, okay? So, we'll do a uh, traditional side control defense. Okay, so he's here and here, right? He starts pushing away. You come. One, two. So his hand is in my hip still. Um, turn this way so she can see. His hand is in my hip right here, right? Do something with your hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I set this up nice and tight, uh, if I'm weak and lazy with it, I mean, he may be able to do something to get it in. I'm not sure. We may be lazy with it. Is that what you have? So even with me being lazy with it, his hand's really not doing much. And this arm can't do much because it's trapped. Okay? So basically what I'm doing is by cupping this, I'm bringing this shoulder right nice and tight into his neck. And this hand is nice and tight into his neck. So it's, if you guys are familiar with an arm triangle, basically all this is, is really is an arm triangle from a different position. It's basically. You agree with that? Okay. So one more time. Flatten out, start from side control. He starts to create his space, goes for his underhook, immediately, wizard, and stop. Are you, are you sure the pressure that I'm always putting pressure here. Uh, so he, when he uh, go back to the underhook. So as I come through, I come down. And at the same time, I press. Slide, 
bicep, bring his hand up to his shoulder, bottom leg, bottom leg is leg closest to his feet. And as I sprawl, I just flex it a little bit. Just like, like I'm trying to, you know. You guys want to give it a shot? Yeah. All right, guys, let's try it. I don't clap. <laughs> 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 Guys, did anybody have any issues so far other than the one issue that I expected a lot of people to have, which is you can't get deep enough? Did anybody have that issue? So I'm going to borrow the big guy right here. Okay, so uh, the question came up, if you can't get deep enough, what should you do? Is there a trick to get it deeper? There's going to be situations where you're just not going to be able to get deep enough. And, you know, we got a big guy right here with a big chest, big arm, right? So if I try and do this the way we just did it, I do everything perfect. Look how shallow my hand is right here, right? So I'm gonna do one of two things. I'm gonna abandon it, right? And restart, or this time I'm gonna slide down, go hand to hand, okay? And just do like, uh, I heard somebody called it a crowbar. I just call it like a, it's almost like a, um, like a paper cutter kind of thing or something, I don't know. So uh, if you want, we can try that before we move on to our next thing. So if you're having trouble getting deep enough, my partner underhooks, I stuff, I'm doing everything perfect, but look where my hand is. That's nowhere near where it needs to be, right? So I know if I try and grab my bicep, I maybe get like two or three fingers in there. Will I be able to finish it? Maybe, probably not though, okay? So as he stuffs, I'm here and I'm here. I'm not getting deep enough, I'm just sliding my hand. Same way I slid my hand, so go back step. Same way I slid my hand down to get to my bicep, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Going this time, I'm just sliding, and as I slide, I'm turning my inside ridge hand, okay? <coughs> into a gable grip, okay? I don't know if you guys are all familiar with the term, but gable grip, no thumbs, and I'm doing this. My thumbs are with my fingers, I'm clapping my hands, okay? Gable, okay? Now I'm bringing my elbow up. I'm just basically just squeezing them, probably more of a crank than a choke. If you catch it right, you may catch a trach, I don't know. Okay, so let's just try that once or twice and then we'll move on to the next thing. So one more time, it's flat, the underhooks, I whizzer and stuff. Slide my hand down, and I'm just choking. Elbow comes up, and I'm just doing this motion here. Okay, just like that. Flexing my bicep, and just a little wrist flex. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. My bad. So over here, he goes with the hook. One, two. Okay, so I'm just, I'll, I'll come help you, but I'm just going through, I'm sliding down, hand to hand my gable grip, elbow comes up a little bit, and flex. Okay, let's try this a couple times, and we'll move on to the next one, right guys? Is everybody actually getting a choke, or are a lot of people just getting a crank on this? Okay, so if you're just getting a crank on it, it's because you're not getting through deep enough, okay? Um, and all you need to do is basically just adjust on the way you're, where do you go? Oh, no, not the big guy. He was hiding. So uh, basically, if I'm not getting through deep enough on this, I'm more than likely going to end up getting a crank on a lot of things, right? Um, which, if I get the cap from there, I don't really care if it's a choke or a crank. But, and if I'm not getting through deep enough, and I do everything perfect, right? I'm here, I'm here, and I'm still not getting through deep enough if I do all these steps. Maybe there's a possibility that he's just a little too thick for me and my arms aren't short enough, aren't long enough. Because even if you do things perfectly, there's going to be times when you just, there's just not enough arm there, right? And you're not going to get exactly what you want out of it. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's where I would change it to that last move, which in most cases has turned out to be the crank, okay? Um, or I would just abandon it and move on to my next position. Or know that I'm not going to go for it to begin with in the first place. Okay, I'm just going to go for something else. So, Everybody has, for the most part, understands that choke now and the basic principles of it. So now we're going to just move on to the exact same thing from a different position. So the class should get easier from this point on because we're just doing the same thing from different positions. That was the whole concept of this class, to see how many different, once you know a DARS, how easy it is to apply in many different situations, right? So we'll keep it simple. We'll just start off with half guard, right? 
So if I'm in half guard position, I'm on top of him, what's his main goal? We're here, get the underhook and get out to my back again, right? Or, or, or get the underhook, set up a sweep, whatever the case may be. Most cases, guys at the bottom of uh, half guard are going for this far side underhook, okay? So from that point, it's the exact same thing, right? So let's just move back a little bit. I don't know why he's moving back a little bit. <laughs> I did the same thing yesterday, I don't know why. So I'm here, he goes for his underhook again. Once again, I'm just scooting my wizard, stuffing his head. Once I get it to this point, um, a gauge I like to use, if I could use my thumb to hook the back of his neck, my ridge hand is in the perfect spot to do a, a choke on his karate, okay? So uh, that's, that's a gauge I always like to use, if I could hook the back of his neck with my thumb, okay? And that's from like any different position where I'm gonna apply a choke. With my hand going through, most times if I can do this, I can put pressure on his carotids and get the choke. Okay? So he shot his underhook, I stuff and I press the head. Okay, he still got my leg hooked up, I don't care. Same thing, I'm sliding it down. So now he may be able to prevent me from sprawling back with my leg. So don't let me scroll this leg back. <laughs> he can't stop you, okay? I'm sorry, he, he's not gonna be able to. He's not in a position where he'll get enough strength to stop my leg from kicking back, okay? Not to mention the whole time I'm cranking his head. Okay? So one more time. We're in, the, uh, we're in half guard. He shoots his underhook. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm taking his arm. I'm throwing the wizard. I'm going under his neck with it. I'm hooking the back of his neck. I'm stuffing his head. I'm sliding my arm straight down. I'm coming up to his shoulder blade or to his far lat if I can. And I'm just, I'm just kicking back my bottom leg. Okay? If he tries to stop me, just put more pressure on his neck. Your legs are going to kick back, trust me. Okay? So you guys understand that? It's the exact same thing when we start from half bar. You want to try it? Let's go. Yep. <laughs> Body types, okay. If 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 I'm like thinner, longer limbs, I'm gonna I'm gonna have an easier time setting this. But with the bigger guy, there's just only so much my arms can go, and only so much I can compress him and stuff him, right? Um, if I'm a little guy on the bottom, I have a big guy on top of me like that. His bulk may work against him in finishing it as well. Okay, so if you're a bigger guy, you may have a hard time getting through deep enough, no matter how much you try and compress me, because your upper body is going to be in the way too, right? So you're not always going to be able to finish the darts itself, and you're not always going to be able to finish going to that whatever you pro bar, paper cut, whatever you want to call it. Okay? You got to know when. You got to know when it's going to work and when it's not, and when to just move on, right? So the question came up, you know, what can I, what can I do to adjust it or whatever? So if he's here, he gets his underhook, right? I know right now I'm not deep enough, okay? Because I'm barely cupping the back of his head. So I know I'm not going to get my bicep, right? I know if I get here, for the, a lot of times when I get to this position, it's just a crank, okay? It's not necessarily a choke. And if you crank on my neck, I'm tapping right away. Some people will resist that, okay? They'll just, mostly younger people, okay? <laughs> You're going to resist someone cranking on your neck. You're like, okay, it's just a crank. It, it hurts a little bit, but it's, I'm, he's, I'm not going to fall asleep because he's not cutting off my arteries. It just hurts a little bit. Maybe he'll loosen up a little bit. Maybe I'll get out of this. If I try this, maybe I'll get out. Okay? So as the person applying the choke, know when you're not going to finish it and, and, and move on, right? So if I'm here and I'm doing this and he's just resistant to this choke, right? As he's moving and trying to, to, to do something, his legs will free up, right? So if I'm doing this from a half guard position, I'm just going to pull my leg out and I'm going to move on to my next submission, okay? So be aware of when it's time to move on, okay? Because no matter how perfect you do something, there is someone resisting it. And if you don't get that choke where it's to the point where it's going to put you to sleep, a lot of people will, res will resist the neck crank. Okay? And you got to know when to, if it's that, if, if you're in side control, just move on to that arm. If you're in uh, half guard, more than likely the legs are going to open up so you can slide through, move on, maybe attack the arm, maybe just sit up a side control, whatever it is you decide to do. Okay, so the next position we're going to do this from, uh, my partner's going to go into like a turtle position. Um, the best way to see this, I guess we'll start here in this one. Okay, so um, 
This is a common position guy curls up on you, right? Uh, a lot of times you hear people go for guillotines or maybe go for anacondas, okay? All, all I'm doing is, this time he's not taking the underhook, I'm just going under on him, okay? So, we're in this position, I'm here, he turtled up, my hand's going to his head, my, my arm is coming under his arm, okay? Because what's this, uh, just stand up. What's the principle again, right? Getting his arm across his, arm, uh, his neck, just like any other choke we're doing, my arm triangle, uh, Triangle choke. So, I'm stuffing his head, bringing my arm under his arm, okay? If I was doing an anaconda, I would come over the top and maybe cup his tricep on this side. I'm doing the opposite. I'm coming under his arm, I'm stuffing his head, and again, I'm hooking his head, same way I did it from the other position. Everybody with me so far? Okay? Exact same thing. I'm in this position, I drop my arm under his arm, I stuff his head. I'm pressing. I slide through to my bicep. Now here's where I change the finish, okay? From here I bring this hand up, and now I just pull forward a little bit and scroll out, okay? Press the head, under the arm, hook the neck as I'm pressing, okay? Slide the hand down nice and tight, bring the hand up, pull them forward, sprawl out the leg. I'm trying to keep it loose. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, does that make sense to everybody? Can they still? Can you still get that if their elbows are in? Are your elbows in? Like a tight turtle. Yeah, that's what I was always taught to keep your elbows in. So bring your elbows in. Where the fuck question? No matter how tight he brings his elbows, you'll get as tight as you want. <laughs> okay. And from here, I could also do the same thing. I could crank them and just bring them over and follow through with the crank from this side. Okay. Um, doing the exact same thing, guys. We're just starting from a different position. He's turtled up. I'm on my position. I'm pressing his head. I'm bringing this arm under his arm. I'm already pressing his head. I'm hooking his neck again. Keeping this nice and tight. Driving this arm down. Catching my bicep. Bringing my hand up. The only difference now is I bring them forward with me. And from here I scroll and crank. Okay? Any questions? Yeah, one um, I struggle a lot with breaking them down from that turtle. Like it's like somebody getting strong or just they have a really good base that far elbow I feel like. They can just kind of take it out really far. Um, so sometimes I can't break them but I don't know if they get it. Okay. Let, let's do this and then we'll address that. Okay? So everybody try it, and then we'll address that, that problem. Okay? Well, again, we're gonna do that. How to set up that choke to begin with, and how to get it nice and tight. Now, from the different positions, and it's basically the same thing, just like small manipulations. Uh, that was Josh. Joe, come here. Okay, so to answer the question we had earlier, um, if you can't get the guy down in that position, right? So if I'm here, I, I do everything perfect, I set up my choke, I get here, I get to this position, he posts out with this arm, and I can't get him over. What am I going to do? Okay, so what I usually do from here is, I come back to this position, right? So I'm going to take my bottom foot, I sit through and drop, and I pull him into there. Now I come through, and I just finish from there. Okay, so what I'm doing is, as I drop my weight, I'm setting up that door nice and tight, and I'm also doing that with his arm. Can you guys all see that? As I drop my body weight down, his arm moves in a little bit. And by dropping underneath him, my arm goes through even further. Does that make sense? Okay? So, and you don't even have to wait at this point. Um, you don't have to do, you don't have to be like, okay, I failed on that because my guy didn't post his arm, now I'm gonna do it. If you wanna do this right from the beginning, you can. So if you're having a hard time getting through deep enough, you can just come right to this position here, right? As you set it through, and hook, this time instead of sliding through right away, because you feel like you're not deep enough, drop through. And I'm pulling him into me. So you see how his arm went across his body now? So now at this point, I'm right here and here. I go through a little deeper, I walk my feet, and I come up. And I just do a little flex. Good? Okay, so, um, does everybody understand what I'm doing? Let's turn this way, so we can see. Okay? Same thing we started with, right? Okay? 
if I want to go from this right from the beginning, go from it right from the beginning. If he posts his arm out so I can't break him down, then I can transition back to it. So if I've already set it, bring the arm back in. If I've already set my darse and he brings his arm out, I'll come back to this position. Okay, I'm not going to try and keep the darts as I drop under because I'm going to limit my movement and I'm going to pull him on top of him. Okay, so I come back to this part where I'm stuffing his head. Sit through, pull him in. You guys all see the position? Now it's easy. You just turn into him, you get my darts. He's going to punch me in the nuts. Tap, <laughs> tap. <laughs> so you guys understand the concept of how I'm dropping down? So without, without actually doing the choke here, Okay, I'm here from this position. I'm just basically dropping my hips forward. Okay, and as I do that, his arm is out. Bring this arm out a little more. His arm goes in. Okay, so that's what sets everything up deeper. And I'm underneath him now. And because I'm underneath him, look how much deeper my arm comes through. Okay, so instead of my reach hand here now, because I drop underneath him, I got my elbow on the far side of his neck. Now as I turn in, it's already put pressure on his head. And I'm getting my, um, even my second hand is coming a lot higher across his back. So it just makes everything a lot more compressed and tighter. So that little flex, and you see how quick he's going. So the rich hand doesn't matter. It's I like the rich hand, but what's happening is I'm getting too deep on him. I'm getting too deep here, right? As I turn, so he, right now it's my elbow there. As I turn, a little higher on my arm, but it's not like the crook of my uh, the crook of my elbow will give him space. So as I turn, my arm is going from here to here. So it's my forearm, the inside of my forearm. I'm still going with the inside ridge. Okay, I don't want like the fatty parts of my arm. I still want that inside ridge, but instead of being all the way out here, I'm probably right about here now. It starts off with pretty much right in there, and that's space. So as I turn, my arm comes back a little bit. The hard part of my forearm goes right across his far side of his neck. And then from there, everything else is the same. His, uh, his shoulder's cutting off the other side. I'm locking up the darts and just flexing. So, you guys want to try it? Let's do it. So as you guys do this, a couple of people I noticed over the whole of the guy was here. Right? Keep rolling through. Roll over the side control. The finisher from the position we started this whole class. Okay? So if you roll too much and the guy's on top of you, keep rolling. Now you're going to end up walking around the head. We're back in the position we started this class from the beginning. Okay? You're just, you're just keeping a lock, rolling through and finishing it from uh, side control. We don't have time to do this, but I just want to show you one more thing real quick. Um, if I'm on the bottom of side control, this is the last way I love to set it up. This is probably my favorite way, and I was hoping we'd have time to get here, but I'll, I will show you. So you guys have to think of the ghost escape. Yes. Ghost escape, you create space. You come out the back and you come to this position. Well, don't waste your time coming all the way back up. Just choke it before you get there. Okay, so I'm here. I create my space, I drop my arm. As I come through, I'm pulling him into me. Throwing up my doors. I just flex him right there. Okay, we don't have enough time to try this, but um, did you guys see how I did that? So if you want to try it afterwards, I'm going to do it again. Yeah. Okay? So to set up the ghost escape, what do I do? I create a little bit of space and I drop my inside arm underneath his, his uh, hip, right? And I use that to roll out. Typically, guys come up and over. As you get to this position, this is where we just finished the last one from, right? I drop my weight down. One, two, three. So one more time. So, create my space, drop my arm, come under. As I'm coming out, I'm pulling him in. Make sense? Last class, we started from the turtle, sat through. This is the position we were in, right? Same position, I'm getting nice and high on his lap, and I'm just flexing a little bit. Um, if you guys want to work on that later or something, just hit me up. If not, I hope you guys enjoyed the class, and thank you for coming in.